Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well, sadly today, Matchbox March, from me, concludes. It really does finish this time. <laughs> so this is my last show. Um, yeah, I, I've... Uh, <laughs> This, you can almost argue that these, uh, I don't know if I've done six or seven shows since the original uh, few, three I think I did, um, with the kits borrowed from David, my friend. Uh, the demand was so high, people said, oh, I wish you were doing more of these, please do more Matchbox kits, Matchbox March. And I thought, oh, well, it literally is by popular demand, so I never plan to do these shows that I've done. One or two of the content have been a bit overlapped with what I've done previously, but some of it has been new as well. Um, so it was never planned. It was never my intention to do this at all. It, it's all been... I've sort of crammed it in at the end of March because people seem to want it, you know. So it really is the viewers and subscribers, yourselves, that have demanded I perform. Get on with it. Give us more Matchbox March immediately. So here I am. I am here to serve. So... The final one then um, from me. Now I should say that Matchbox did so many other things, and I mentioned this is really based on my own collection, obviously. But they did a range of ships. I've only shown one ship, uh, and they did lots of cars. I've only shown two cars. Um, lots of other things that they got into as well, um, ancillary items like they did, uh, sort of uh, diorama play sets and all sorts of things that went off a bit of a tangent. But uh, the AMT trucks, etc., which weren't really Matchbox, and, and I said. For me, Matchbox was the Lesney company, uh, so that's 72 to 82. Now what you do get though, we're now going to look finally at the orange range in the armour section, which is a smaller range, granted. Um, now there are, again, there are more, far more kits than I have shown you that I just don't own, uh, or particularly need or want to own. But I have here three, there's actually four, those of you that are good at counting will notice there's four, but there's actually, uh, one of them is replicated. And I wanted to show you again, talking about packaging and boxing and how they, they got changed the manipulator. So we're going to start off actually with the Morris. Now, this is an interesting one because I don't know if any of you saw, by the way, I'm jumping around here, but recently I went to the Nantwich show and there was, um, there was a guy there from crew, from not from the same club that I'm a member of, from the other crew club, and we were chatting away and I met him before. And he'd done this kit, which is the Morris C8 truck, Mark II, and the 17 pounder gun with the Willis Jeep. It doesn't make it all that clear, but there's three things here, three elements. And he'd done this, done it beautifully. This was in my um, montage photos collection of the Universal Model Show at Nantwich. And what he'd done, zoom you in, uh, what he'd done is he'd added a couple of figures and he got a military policeman, it was a resin figure I think, and I think he said it was a resin figure of the military policeman and the other figure was a plastic one he found somewhere else. And it just added to this scene and he was basically showing this diorama as you see it here with the street corner. And these, these are wonderful dioramas. I wish they'd done more of these. And they were sort of standing around the corner here having a discussion. Um, and, and here you've got your Willis Jeep, you've got your Morris uh, truck, and here's your um, your 17 pounder gun, which of course was a great tank busting gun, which was the same gun in the Sherman Firefly. And he had all this, and he'd, he'd really done a beautiful job. And I said, that's, that, that's the nicest version of this kit I've ever seen. Anyway, here it is. So this is, uh, we've got two versions, and I'm showing it twice because this is the original boxing. And you can see this one's a little bit worse for wear, just, just down this side here. But the actual printing uh, is in good shape. Now this came out in 1977. Yeah, um, and it came out, as you see it here, when they, um, th this is when they were booming. I mean, Matchbox kits were, in 77, 78, they were selling like hot cakes. It was their, probably their best year, I think, 77, 78. We've got the window box. You can see there you've got your building, uh, a little bit of the building there. With the, you know, you've got so many opportunities to do weathering and things like that. You've got the broken windows. So lovely the way they've done this. A really nice example of Matchbox Lesney at its finest, really. You know, the, the, the scale details are really nice. They've, got, they've kind of got it all right. I was really impressed with this. But I'm showing two of them because we've got this one over here as well. This is the slightly later boxing. Uh, again, there's no... Uh, this is now dated 83, and this is after the... This is in this interim period, when just after they went, Lesney went bust. And it's now... Um, they're now calling themselves... Is it Matchbox International? Yeah, Matchbox International. Printed and made in England before they moved it all out to the Far East. So this is the last real uh, 
a generation of the ones that were made in England. And of course, a lot of you know you can get these, uh, you know, reboxes, Revell. But it, it, you'll see the made in England has been deleted and it won't be in multiple colours. But just wanted to show you that, you know, there's the two iterations of the same kit. Uh, again, so I, I've got several copies of several of these. Um, but I think as we've only got a few of these, why don't we actually take a little look? Because I know that that's a lot of you are thinking, I can feel you say, oh, just open the box, just open the box. Trouble is, when there's 16 kits, you know, you can't really do that. <laughs> but today we can afford to do it, I think. So we'll put that one on the side, it's got the nicer box, but let's get the original out and just have a, just a quick book, just nothing, nothing in too much detail. And then we've got to see the German version. And Monty's Caravan, that's going to be good. Monty's Caravan, I should just tell you as well, of course, um, my good friends at ICM in the Ukraine are producing that in 35th scale. And it's due very, very soon, actually. Very soon indeed. So watch out for that one. I'll be reviewing it soon. So here you go. Here's your, um, uh, your, um, your Morris truck and your, your 17-pounder um, tank destroyer. Uh, and of course the Willis Jeep is included in here as well. So it's a really nice set this, you know, and I think the guy I was talking to this, I'm sorry I don't know his name, but he may remember me I'm sure, uh, the conversation that we had. Um, and David was with, with me at the time I think. Uh, we were chatting away and I said that's the nicest one I've ever seen done. I've seen some nice ones done. But yeah, here you go. So you've got lots of little elements. This is a nice kit, you know, this will keep you busy more than a weekend I think. Take you a week or two to, to, do, to do it justice I think. Yeah, and it's really nice. So that's the, the sort of darky green. Then you've got your, a lot of the building. And look at, look at, it, I mean, this, this has been done properly. This is not like one or two of the ones I moaned about in the purple range where they were a bit of an afterthought and a bit rudimentary. This is central to the kit. I mean, look at that, look at the, look at this chimney, chimney, the sort of external chimney breast. Oh, right to the top of the chimney there and the whole wall. That is really nice. So well done. And then you've got your sort of roof and your uh, tarpaulin roof for your, um, your Morris truck, C8 truck. And the same again for your Jeep, Willis Jeep. Uh, another bit of wall there. And you've even got a Bren gun here, there's a Bren gun. Look at that, you've got your, uh, some Lee Enfield rifles, is that? Yeah, several Lee Enfield rifles we've got there. Look at that, fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're really, they really made an effort. I thought they'd done it really well. You know? One of the ones I really liked, and uh, I actually built this in back in the day, about seventy nine, I think, seventy eight, seventy nine. Look at the street. You know, they've got the street detail. You know, complete with damage and uh, something match what's very good at was doing like a bomb crater with a bit of piping or wiring loom from under the street there, visible. And you've got to, these are not sink marks, these are deliberate depressions in the street that they're supposed to be there. <laughs> so they're, they're true sink marks, they're actually sunk underneath on the other side. And they've done it really well. And you've got all your detailed wheels and tyres, your seats, and your chassis, and your leaf springs are here. There we go. A nice job being done. Nice job being done there. So that is your. Rather interesting three element set, complete with figures. I think that as that chap said, it just needed a just needed a couple of more figures, you know, that was what was missing on it really. Um I'm pretty sure I've done a review on this already, so I won't I won't dwell on it too long. Um but there you go, so they can see the difference between a, again back to back with a couple of different boxings uh, and how they've differentiated the uh, Sort of differentiated, differentiated themselves, I should say, from other kits in the market by adding the, the diorama. The diorama. Now here's the thing: why can't we have dioramas today? Then I, I really don't understand the likes of Airfix and others, um, including Ravel, who just want to spew out and make this a cash cow. Um, you know, you took one look at that, and if you love little armor kits, more oh, you were gone. That was it. You had to have it. And this was retailing at the time for about, um, oh, I noticed on that one, it's actually got one pound and six pence, so that's interesting. So I was going to say about a pound, so I wasn't far off in what I was just about to say. It's got one, one pound and six p. And they were really, really nice kits. So anyway, let's look at the other one. So here we've got the, um, 
Now this is the original boxing again, and I've got several boxings of this, so I might not open this one because I'm trying to not open the original boxings if they're in very good condition. Um, but it's the same kit, as you can see. This has got the original artwork on it, though. So let me just show you that, and I'll see if I can just grab the later offering. In fact, I've got two. See my point here about greediness, can't you? Oh, this isn't going to go down very well, is it? You see, I've got several. I've got several of the same kit. So we've got um, Generation 1. And in fairness, they're both the same. They're both the same. They're identical. Um, that, that's just not as good. Now, this is 65 pence, interestingly. So we've got a different price on that one. So that was probably earlier than that one was. Shall we take a look at it? Let's take a look at that one. It's the oldest one of the lot. Let's not be greedy and show everybody how many I've got. And that will go down. I'll be misunderstood. <laughs> I'm trying to decide which one to open is what I'm trying to do. I think we'll have a look at, at this. I know we've seen it before, but I think we'll have a little look. So, th sorry, so this is the, the German um, half-track truck, uh, the SD uh, KF Z2, and then you've got a 75 mm 75 cm pack 40 gun, anti-tank gun again, and a BMW motorcycle R75 with a sidecar. What's not to like then? Absolutely fantastic. On the back, we've got, here you go, Again, this is a little bit discoloured, so I want to see it in sort of which is the best looking one. Well, interestingly, they've done it differently, haven't they? Let's just have a look at this, actually. You can see how with the later Revell boxing they've done, and again, they've gone and tarted up the artwork a little bit. Um, and you've also removed the swastika. Here's, here's an interesting point. Can you see that? The eagle has got a swastika removed. And of course, in the original it's actually present, as I'm sure you can see. So I, I can kind of understand that. If it, you know, this is the German ownership, so they're going to do that now, aren't they? Um, but I say, you can actually see how they have changed the, the colourings. Sorry, I'm getting a bit over my skis here. What's going on? Made it very much look like a desert uh, diorama. And there they've made it look more like a, maybe an Eastern Front diorama. Um, Interesting how they've changed the whole look of that actually uh, to make it perhaps more of a a different option. Does it tell you which North Africa or Eastern Front? Yes, it is the Eastern Front. So they've given you an Eastern Front look there, or the North African Front look here. Anyway, jumping around. Let's just let's just have a look at it properly. I'll zoom me back a bit. <coughs> So this is a little bit discoloured, but then again it is a 77 original. I think it's been somewhere with a lot of light, perhaps a shop window. We've got the original uh, instruction book. And I have done a review on this, I say again, I've done this already, so I'm not going to do a full review, I'm just going to give you a little, a little glimpse at it, that's all. Zoom in a bit for this. So you want to see the review, just type in my name and half track and it'll come up I'm sure. Then we've got some rubber band tight uh, tracks I should say. Oh, yes. Tracks. Yeah we know that these matchbox can be a little bit dangerous don't we? As uh, poor old uh, friend of the channel Mr John Bevan will tell you I previously <laughs> reviewed one of his kits a Honey Stewart tank which was the had the silver metalized rubberized tracks and it gone totally solid. It was literally like, I just got them, didn't we? Ting! And it was like pieces of glass shearing around. It was just so brittle. Oh, it was terrible. But the interesting part of that story is he's recently, last week he came on and said, oh, don't worry, Peter, listen, I got a second one of those and it was exactly the same as the problem that you had with mine. He said, again, brittle, completely brittle. So it must be something to do with the metalisation, I think. I think over time it's made the, the rubber go completely hard and brittle, very unusual. Anyway. Didn't happen with the others, as you can see. So obviously they've added, they've added something into the mix of the uh, the pigment to get the metallization. It's had an effect on the uh, uh, the uh, the softness over time and the uh, malleability of the of the rubber. Now look at this little motorbike. Isn't this cute? Now isn't it small? It's in the size of my finger at the side. That's nice, isn't it? This is the one that's going to have the sidecar on it. And here is the sidecar, 
there. <laughs> uh, and then you've got your gun, uh, shielding for the gun, for the pack 37. And you've got your sort of all your running chassis and your uh, floor area for your truck. There's the gun itself here where my finger is. There's the gun muzzle. This looks nice actually. And then you've got your, your towing arms here for towing it. Um, what do you call them? There's a name for these, isn't there? They call them the, the, the towing arm, but they're also to stabilize, like stabilizer arms, you know, when it fires to reduce the recoil effect. Very nice sprue. And then you've got your. Um, just trying to think. Is it? Oh, now look at this. Oh, that's not politically correct, is it? That one. Oh, 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 oh. I better not show that really. But that shows. I'm interested to see if that's on the. Right, we must actually just out of interest. This is a point of interest, isn't it? We must check if that's been removed from the latest sprue moulding. I, I bet it has. But let's have a little look. That'd be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Um, it's kind of unfortunate, but I can kind of see why they might do that. Which one was it on? That one. That one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at this. <laughs> right, okay, I'll need to pull it out a, a, a centimetre or two. Look at this. So you can see that, yes, indeed, here's our eagle again. And you can see clearly, whoops, he says, see clearly. You can see that that's been removed, can't you, from the, uh, from the emblem that's been taken away. Which is kind of understandable, I suppose. <laughs> I'm not sure if I agree with it. Uh, I think it's just like you know, airbrushing history away. And uh, I understand that in Germany there's concern about this, but I think it's probably a little bit, a little bit over the top. Their concern is a bit extreme, and I think that once you start down that path of, of deleting things, then you're in trouble. Uh, somebody did grumble to me recently that they were looking at the ice. I was demonstrating the ICM catalogue, and they had uh, ICM had removed the. Uh, the red soviet stars off the tails of the MiG 25s and things like that. It's kind of the same problem isn't it? You've got to be careful really, not, not take it to extremes. Anyway, <laughs> moving on swiftly, uh, look at the beauty of the way that this was moulded though. Look at the uh, look at the way they've gone and got this street with all the tra sort of track marks in it, yeah? Isn't that nice? <laughs> you can see the individual tracks from all the various vehicles that are run over at different different pictures and different types of, you know, it portrays different sizes and types of vehicles having I mean, been in there. And look at these figures. Aren't these good actually for, for something that's come as an extra with a, a vehicle? They're really very good. Same on the other side, he says. Get it right, there we go. Aren't those good? They're superb figures. You've got your tarpaulin roof, all your wheels are there. If you're half track over near the road, slightly controversial, but you've got your, your wheels for your BMW car, motorcycle, I should say, <coughs> sidecar. And then last but not least, we've got our bits of building um, with all the shell holes in it and bomb damage, etc. It's been, been a bit of a battle going on here, quite clearly. And then you've got your, your chassis here with all your axles for your wheels. It's a very nice kit, that. Um, it's a very nice kit. It is a bit of a shame, I think, that they've had to adulterate it on the later one. I think just, just leave it be, you know. It's unfortunate, you know, that, that Revel did that. I, I have some sympathy with them being in Germany and them doing this, however. I have no sympathy with Airfix doing it with their decals. I don't understand why Airfix feel the need to do this. It's, it's an obsession that they seem to have, some of these companies. And we all know there are ways around it. There's a, way around, there's a way around doing that in a different way, so that you can portray it in the accurate fashion that it was intended, uh, without causing offence to everybody else. You know, there are ways of doing it without airbrushing history and giving the customer the choice of a genuine uh, replica of what was intended or not. That should be down to the customer. Uh, otherwise, it's like brainwashing, isn't it? Anyway, move on. Rant over. <laughs> Phil Marshall Montgomery, Montes Caravan. How about this? Check this out. Now, this is—I uh, say this is pertinent because 
in a month or so, maybe a couple of months max, just a matter of weeks, you're going to see one of these, Monty's Caravans. I think it was a Bedford. And, uh, is it on it? Bedford? I think it's a Bedford. Um, and it's going to be released in 35th scale, a new, brand new tool from ICM in the Ukraine. So here we've got it with um, a Daimler Scout car at the side, armour plated Daimler Scout car, which you see here. Now this is a later boxing, I think this is an 83, does it say, will it dare tell me? Yeah, 83, I'm right, yeah. So, <clears throat> sometimes they put it in different places as well. But we've got a bit of uh, adhesive needs sorting out on this. That needs a bit of uh, PVA glue on it, I'll soon fix that. So look at this, isn't this wonderful? You've got Monty's Caravan, and they're having like an orders group meeting in the corner of a, of a street where there's been a, some sort of war memorial that's been demolished. Um, yeah, that's, that's quite original looking, I'd say. You've got the option of having it in North Africa in September 42. Or you've got April 45, obviously, in Germany, from the same vehicle, in fact. Um, so let's have a look at this. This is going to be our... Monty's Caravan is going to be our last kit this year for Matchbox March from me. So why don't we have a look at this and have a bit of fun see what we can see in here. There shouldn't be anything controversial this time, I don't think. He says, if you can get into it, that might help. But these gloves are supposed to help you do this. For the reasons why. Other than the fact that these, some of these kits are 50 odd years old. I'm not getting in there, not doing well at all, actually. There we go. If, 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 don't force them, yeah? Just try the other end because it might be easier. That's what's just happening. Okay. So it's a shame it hasn't got the sort of uh, the windows on it, but anyway. Uh, Monty's Caravan, da da da. Again, I've done a review on this, so I'm not going to do a full review here, but just assume you have a little sneaky look at this. See what you think. But these 176 um, uh, vehicles that they did, they did them so well, you know, they were really, really nice. Uh, especially when they've got the appeal to the, both the younger and the older modeler. Yeah, you've got the two different options, so that's the other option, the uh, Germany 45 option there. So let's have a look at the parts. We've got, got some nice bits of street here. Uh, it reminds me of that Puma one that we did on the, uh, the purple range. And you've got some nice wheels. Um, so that's your wheels for your truck, for your Bedford truck. And then over here we've got the wheels for the Daimler Scout car, much smaller. And they're not overly large, are they, to be fair? And then on the next sprue, on the next sprue we've got. Um, all of basically all the truck, which is quite large, of course. It's got one, two, three rows of windows. It's quite a decent sized vehicle, is this? Like an articulated truck. It's not articulated, but it's almost that size. It's a significant size vehicle. So you've got all the windows, you've got doors, you've got your uh, radiator here. And you've got your tarp all in roof over the top. And then you've got your scout car, which is quite a straightforward design, really. Quite a simple thing. Like a small version of the Humber, isn't it? And then finally, last but not least, we have got the street. Now, this is actually very, very cleverly done, and it's not... In that artwork, it isn't made all that obvious, but if you look, it's actually like a, a statue that's, that's fallen over or been hit by shell fire. And it's got arms. It's definitely a statue of a person. It actually looks like it might be a, almost like the bishop or something. It's very interesting, that figure. Can you see the arms here and here? And the hands. So it's been a statue, it's been toppled. Um, and there's also it's it's also got tram tram lines look. So it's clearly somewhere in Germany or maybe Belgium. Uh, and then we've actually got we've actually got Field Marshal Montgomery himself, who I believe is this we've got three figures here, and I believe that Field Marshal Montgomery is the one on the extreme left. If I can get close as I can, there we go. Montgomery on the left. It's probably R R Montgomery Brook and 
General Horrocks, I expect. <laughs> Something like that. And you've got all your suspension and your uh, differentials for your truck. And you've got some uh, f uh, fuel drums as well there. And they're actually using the fuel drums to put their mat tables on. And again we have got here a Bren gun. See that in the middle? Amazing. But I do like that, that thing with the statue there. Um, I just wish the, uh, the, the, the features were a little bit clearer because that's most interesting the way they've done it. You know, to get all that in a kit that was costing about a pound, it's incredible, isn't it? That came out in 77. What does it say on it? It says 83, but I know this came out, I think 78, I think was the issue, original issue. 78 or 79. It was certainly before 1980 that this came out, for sure. You can check on scale, mates, it'll tell you anyway. Um, and there we have it. So really, you know, you've got your chassis parts and things, of course, but what a magnificent thing, you know, for something that would cost you a pound. Uh, I, I mean, I know that inflation alters things every time. Of course it does. But even, even in its day, that is a fantastic bit of value. You know, what is there not to like with something like any of those three kits there? You're going to enjoy building those. And they're going to deliver a huge amount of value. I'm going to shut now, is it? Going to deliver a huge amount of value. I think they've got many, many kits. There's actually only three different models. <laughs> it's got different iterations of them, haven't I? There we go. So there you have it. I hope you found that was interesting. Um, I, I kind of wish I got more of these um, these orange range ones now, but I think those are the ones that really caught my eye. Um, those of you, I've had some comments from you just in the last day or two. Um, quite a lot of people, perhaps you're a bit younger than myself, and uh, it opened the eyes of a few of you that didn't know they did ships and didn't know that they did some of these extra um, armoured sets like this. <clears throat> it's it's amazing, I, I tell you now, that I think that Matchbox kits were the greatest value model kits of all time, relative to their time. The greatest value that I've ever seen, in terms of the quality and the package that you got. Yeah, they weren't Tamiya, you know, they weren't the finest detail, they, you know, they weren't... Um, they weren't engineered to be the most accurate in history, but they just delivered so many, they ticked so many boxes for so little money. They were amazing. They were amazing. It was a tragic loss, you know. Um, I kind of wish, you know, if I could go back in time and give them advice, it's like anything, isn't it? Hindsight, you know. But I'd go back in time and say, stop wasting all your money on the Matchbox cars and focus on this. Because if they'd have not gone bust, you can see they were evolving and getting more and more interesting subjects and more and more better quality. And if they'd have evolved and had been, been financed to carry on, imagine where they might be today. I'm not saying that they'd be Tamiya, but I think they'd be up there with Airfix and probably better than Airfix. Because they were kind of, in my opinion, better than Airfix at the time, you know. I mean, that one there, 65 pence. What the hell could you buy, in, even in 77, for 65p that would give you more fun and pleasure than that? It was incredibly good value for money. They were cheap and they delivered, you know, they punched way above their weight. They were fantastic products, I think. Um, every time I went down to the, either, it was either the news agents, the post office, or later when I was in the Lake District in sort of mid 70s onwards, late 70s, it was the little uh, DIY and uh, haberdashery shop. Uh, and the husband ran the DIY and all the model kits, and the wife did the haberdashery and, uh, and wool and things like that, you know, <clears throat> crocheting, knitting, and all that stuff. And he'd say to me, Peter, I've got a new delivery from Matchbox, and it'll be in on Thursday. So come in Thursday or Friday, and you'll see all the new kits, and I'll be like, whoosh, I'll be down there, almost knocking on his door, waiting for him to open. You know, that's how excited I was. And this is the chap, a uh, lovely chap called Frank Fiddler. Uh, and he wasn't a fiddler, <laughs> he didn't live up to his name. Uh, he was a nice guy and he um, he's the one that had the the big BF109E um, that I did in the Battle of Britain style, crashed, landed in a field. My first ever diorama and he put it in the window. So we, we almost became friends for life and uh, sadly he's no longer with us. But uh, those are the days, you know, you remember these things, it was very enjoyable. All my school friends, it's funny how history repeats itself. I remember all my school friends used to say to me, 
uh, you buy a lot of models, do you build any? I don't, I don't know why this was, I think it's just that I didn't used to take them to school because I was off frightened of breaking them quite a lot. And they obviously, you don't actually build any models, you just buy them, don't you? This is what people say to me now, of course. <laughs> you never build them, you just buy them. Uh, and then, of course, when this model was in the window of the local model shop, wow, did my profile go up locally, you know. I became almost a celebrity modeler, you know. It was like being Spencer Pollard in miniature. <laughs> anyway, on that on that note, I will be spending a bit more time um, in the next few weeks. I'll be fo focusing my attention on my Tamiya Mosquito, so I will be focusing on more on building. So I'll try and give you a few updates, because because of all this Matchbox March, I haven't got a lot done, if I'm honest. Uh, also, I've had a lot of extra work on as well, so I've been working longer hours and things. So uh, I haven't been able to tackle it, but I will. I, my enthusiasm is high to that kit. Uh, and I've already started doing quite a lot of preliminary painting and things like that. But I'll start, once I start putting it together, I'll give you some updates. Uh, we're going to be working on the cockpit first. And I, I'll, I'll do a video or two, perhaps every couple of weeks, uh, for YouTube. Certainly once a month anyway. And you'll see it gradually evolve over the year. Because I've given myself until uh, sort of September to get that finished. So I'm not rushing it. I want to do it my way at my pace and enjoy it. So, so there we are. Anyway, so um, stay tuned for that. And of course, some wonderful new kits coming from ICM in the Ukraine. Something to look forward to. Um, I hope you enjoyed Matchbox Marks. The Matchbox March. N nearly did it again. Um, I've just realised, actually, looking at me over here are some, some of my figures. I never quite got around to finishing, which I will do. That's why they're there, to remind me. And these are the ones that I think Jason sent me that... Uh, that were the figures to go with the Puma, but you'll have already seen, I had some already. Uh, what I was missing, as you know, was the street. But there you go, some figures there I could, I could uh, if I get bored, I'll just uh, switch over to finishing them off. I've already done the initial paint job. They just need the, uh, their faces need to be, it's going to be that. There we go. We need their faces to be uh, painted up and stuff like that. But obviously with all the other, things I've got on at the moment it's not really a priority anyway there we go so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you thought Matchbox March was interesting um, uh, there's plenty of more kits that I don't have uh, you know they've they did things like the Tiger Moth and the Puma uh, the Sea Venom um, uh, quite a few certainly the Sea Venom I've done the review on uh, although it wasn't my own, my own kit so have a look on uh, go, go have a look on my channel You'll find the vast majority of the Matchbox kits there, with the exception of the ships and the AMT vehicles. But of the original tranche, you know, those original ten, first ten years, you'll find the Lesney products are, are mainly there. Uh, and, uh, and for those that I don't have, you can find reviews of them and see them elsewhere anyway, I'm sure. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give me a 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you are a subscriber and a regular supporter, don't forget to double check that you've. Because people still say, people that are regulars say, "Oh, I didn't get informed that this show was coming up." So check you've dinged the notification bell and you've dinged the all option. It's really important because YouTube has this uh, algorithm thing that it, it, it seems to be very random. Only if you ding all on my channel will you be guaranteed to be informed. So very important you do that to get the most benefit out of it. Anyway, that's it from me for a while. Thank you very much for, for joining me. I hope you thought this little nostalgic tour was fun. Perhaps it brought back some nice memories for you, for you all as well. It certainly did for me. Anyway, thanks a lot for all your time. Until next time, stay well, stay safe. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you very soon. Until then, thanks a lot. And bye for now.